you know, art is a thing and it does things to people. Let's talk about that in this episode. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's Netflix TV review of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. This episode will focus on episode five, which is Pikmin's Model and is directed by Keith Thomas. Okay, so we are finally at an HP Lovecraft story. It took five episodes, uh, but we very much know that Guillermo del Toro, or at least if you don't know, Guillermo del Toro is very influenced by HP Lovecraft and the style of monsters that HP Lovecraft uh, talked about in his stories and the concepts and ideas of what HP Lovecraft was doing, which is like the darkness of man, the concepts of like going into the you know insane realities of the world around us and stuff like that. And if you've ever read an HP Lovecraft story, you know that these stories are dark dark and disturbing but they have a lot of hidden meaning behind them and that's why you know the story pickman's uh, model is basically what, what it's trying to do it shows the darkness of man it shows the nature of the reality of how art can influence and you know can change and twist the world around us and how it is very effective and you know you know the, how we look at things and i guess you could say and so this episode is directed by keith thomas uh keith thomas of course directed uh, the recent fire starter which wasn't very good but he's a competent director so obviously he's brought in to do a guillermo del toro property and this has a, a pretty decent cast. The you know the two main leads are of course Crispin Glover who plays Pikmin and Ben Barnes who plays Thurber. Uh, of course Thurber is the what would we call the protagonist. He's the one where we are following. He's our you know surrogate in a lot of respects. He's he's basically trying to woo this young woman named Rebecca who's played by Oriana Lamon. She's an individual that you know has a father that is very protective of her. But he is an artist. Thurber is a is an influencing artist. He's an individual that's very good at what he does. He loves to draw. He's attending to school. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if Ben Barnes is playing a young person in his twenties, even though he's like close to forty, and you can tell. So I I don't know if this is like college, or that this is him just kind of you know wanting to become a like a, a, a like a fantastic artist, someone who's looked you know well upon, which he is in a lot of respects. Well, somebody is brought in named Pickman, who was part of the, who was a famous artist that was part of the boston you know artist society and stuff like that kicked out for his drawings and as we learn pickman is an individual that loves to draw uh very geiger-esque very lovecraftian style pictures very demented very demonic you know very unsettling very uncomfortable pictures of like very gruesome naturely stuff with like heads on platters and you know demons and souls and it's just it's it's very uncomfortable stuff to look at but pikmin has a thing where he likes to go to grave sites and look at pick you know like you know uh, paint like the very uh, macabre and stuff like that well these two actually garner a friendship while he's in college and uh in the process of everything the the world around Thurber, once kind of Pikmin brings him under his wing, starts to kind of what I would say change. It starts to kind of manipulate. So he sees a painting. He's you know Pikmin talks about I don't know if it's like his family or he talks about something about this painting. It's this young woman like with a cross on her head. It's this very gruesome picture. And Ben Barnes' Thurber character, the Thurber character, is very unsettled by it, but starts to kind of having these unsettling visions and he starts seeing things that are in the, the Pikmin pictures, the Pikmin Pikmin paintings. Uh, he starts seeing the monsters. He starts seeing like the, the woman and kind of like uh, in the background, you know, cause this does place, take place in 1900. So it's like very Victorian style. And, Starts to, it starts to affect his relationship with Rebecca, who you know has him come to see her father, and basically what I'm gathering, what I can, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, it's starting to show that there is an underlying darkness to Thurber's personal persona, that he's an individual that is very, you know, he may seem to be kind of a good natured person but there is a darkness underneath him you know he's a drinker he's an individual that's an alcoholic and deals with that kind of scenario and he's once he reaches pikmin i think pikmin's character is an, is a surrogate for you know looking at the world in a very unsettling nature a very truthful nature and that's why these paintings are the way they are it, it, it the question though that i was really confused about that i kind of was like what is this episode trying to do is are these characters these creatures he's seeing are are they real? Are they not? Are they a manifestation of like the things that uh, the, you know Thurber's character is uh, kind of manifesting to himself? 
you know, it affects him in the natures of like, you know, like I said, his relationship with Rebecca and the parents. It's really, it's kind of one of those stories where if you, if you know the story really well, you might get the underlying themes, but if you don't, it's going to be more of like, is this a tales of the crypt type story where it's just creatures that are, that are really out there. But until you're kind of poisoned in the mind of these paintings, you'll never understand the, the meanings behind it. And it leads to basically Pikmin disappearing and it jumps forward like I think 17 years or something like that. And then it goes to Pikmin or I'm sorry, Thurber now has a family with Rebecca, has a young kid. He's part of this arts. I think he's part of the Boston Art Society. And in the process of everything, it's everything seems fine for him. But he receives a painting that he doesn't open, but he receives it. And he starts having these like weird kind of nightmares with the people that he saw in the painting earlier. And everything that starts happening, he opens up the painting. And it's like this kids, these kids are being attacked by these creatures. And I, it, it was just, it's really unsettling. Like there, it's some, there's some of the most stark imagery in this entire series so far. But it's like... You know, Thurber comes, or I'm sorry, Pikmin comes back and he is an individual trying to get back into uh, Thurber's life to get him to understand the world around him. It feels like Pikmin is drawing the world around him and so on and so forth. And it leads down to a road where the kid is having nightmares now. He thinks he's seeing like, f like smoke kind of running out the window. And then it leads him to approaching and confronting Pikmin who asks him to come to his house and so he obliges as long as he stays away from uh, Pikmin stays away from the Thurber's family. Uh, it leads into some really unsettling things where this house is dilapidated. This is a house that uh, Thurber had nightmares about, and he brings him into this like under like this basement where the creatures are real. The creatures are a thing. They could be the manifestation of just the darkness of the human soul in a lot of respects. I, I, I don't know fully know Lovecraft very well, but I know his uh, pertinence for telling about the darkness of the human soul, the human psychology, the human mind, and how we manifest like the most crazy things in our life. And I think that's what's happening here. And even though Thurber is an individual is trying to protect his family, there is no way to get out of that darkness. He's now fully enveloped in it. He unfortunately kills Pikmin in a misunderstanding. And the main creature he's been seeing in the paintings comes out of the uh, of this well and actually takes Pikmin's character into the well, almost feeling like this character uh, is fully consumed now. Thurber is fully consumed with the darkness, but it, he ends up uh, at an art gallery. He thinks everything's fine. We see paintings of Pikmin. We see one of the uh, I think it's like Gabriel or somebody of that nature who's looking at a painting. He turns around and like half his eyeball is cut off. It's it's creepy and disturbing but it leads uh it leads pikmin back to his house where his wife is chopping up food he turns around and she's missing her eyes and we find out the kid's head's in the oven like the, his son's head is in the oven and um you know uh crispin glover's character talks about how you know we, we always find ourselves in the darkness it really is just like an unsettling episode that just talks about just like the nature of who we are and the places we'll go and how, once again, how art and the nature of art, like whether it's movies or paintings or books or, you know, anything, anything of that nature, it could be like, you know, the Mein Kampf or it could be, you know, Stephen King's The Dark Tower or something like that. It's just the, these natures of these abilities to like uh, kind of shape the reality of the world around you just by the nature of what they're trying to do. I mean, paintings and artwork, are some of the most valuable pieces in the world of just anything because they have stories to tell and they're very interesting stories and they shape our our views and perspective on things when you really study it and whether this is like a you know a macabre horror story or whether this is a like a, a mystical story or this is a story about you know the fantastical which it could be all these things at once it's a story that feels like it's very much trying to portray the the darkness in the human human mind and soul, and that's it's pretty for it's pretty powerful storytelling. I don't necessarily know if Keith Thomas and the people behind the writing staff really delivered. I think it is a little obtuse in a lot of respects. I do think Crispin Glover is giving an ac giving a Bostonian accent, which is absolutely it's like Gobna and stuff like that. It's just like no, please don't do that, Crispin. Oh my God, what are you doing? Um, other than other than that, he's really good. You know, Crispin Glover is a weird dude, but he he can definitely portray weirdness. Look at Willard. It was funny because he was talking about rats in the episode, or mice or whatever. And of course, 
you know, there's a whole episode where he deals with rats, which is called Willard. But he's always been a weird dude in that process. So this is a perfect episode for him. Uh, I think Ben Barnes is fine. I never think he fits the full potential of who he could be as an actor. Um, he definitely is under uh, he, he doesn't rise to the potential that of course Crispin Glover does in this episode I think the rest of the characters like Rebecca are fine they're just more background characters they're more plot devices than anything um, I think the the I do think what Keith Thomas and his production crew have done is fascinating and interesting and uncomfortable and really cool to watch like I said it's very macabre and disturbing and graphic and I think that's perfect for H.P. Lovecraft in a story that he's telling and like I said I read up on some of little bit about this and apparently it's a very much a different type of storytelling aspect than what hp lovecraft was ever known for doing so with that said you know it's an interesting episode i just think it has its problems with the storytelling mechanics i think it really falters um when it's trying to make something some interesting points i think it really falters on some of the casting choices and the acting like i said ben barnes is not that great and overall i just think it's a it's one of those episodes where you know, when you see a season of episodes, it's really the one you, you know, I, me personally that you least forget or you most forget in the long run. Maybe people will enjoy it. Uh, I've always seen where I like something more than a lot of people did and they like something more than I did. It's that type of unfortunate thing. So with this episode, I'm not going to like, you know, say it's like a five or six. It's just more of like a seven and a half. Uh, it's still an interesting story. It's still better than some of the stories I, I've seen through other anthology series. But I just don't think it lands as well as it should. And it does have creepy imagery, but that's why it's a 7.5 out of 10. So, And, of course, that's going to be my take on the episode Pikmin's uh, model. Like I said, you know, you might enjoy it. You probably enjoy it more than I did, which tends to happen. So let me know in the comments below what you think. What do you think of the overall story itself? The overall conclusion? How did they portray H.P. Lovecraft's story? Uh, all that good stuff. So without further ado, uh, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell top to find us coming next if you like the video awesome hit that like button and uh we'll see you for that next episode peace out guys